All right, what is going on, people? Ring World Map here. Today, we are going to talk about a fighter from the Philippines. Most of you might not know him yet, but you're about to, okay? This guy is named Pito Polinar, and he is a very slick fighter, you know, very rare, especially in the Philippines, you know, where there are a lot of brawlers. So let's get right into the video. The first one I want to talk about is the Squared's mother. Basically, what he does here is he throws the right hand, and then he squares up, boom, gets out of the center right there. And there are a couple of purposes for this, for doing this, but the main thing for Pete is, whenever he does this, first of all, it allows him to get out of the center. So as you can see here, he takes his head away from the center. How do you know that? His head is outside the right hip of, uh, of his opponent, so his opponent can't really land this right hook right here. And so that's one reason why. His mother's there, and then he waits for his opponent to throw some, and then he waits for them to miss, okay? And so that's one thing that uh, Peter Polinar does a whole lot. Here's another example. Apolinar will again throw a right hook here, but this time to the body, and then he's gonna stay away from the center again, he's gonna square up, get out of the, uh, the right hip of his opponent, stay relatively close until his opponent stops punching, and then once his opponent stops punching, it's either he'll throw something, or he'll get out, okay, but he stays relatively close there. And so for this particular one, he decided to step out after that uh, combination, or after that punch. So here's the next one now. He's gonna throw that right hand once again, staying on the or staying on outside of the hip of uh, his opponent, and then he stays very heavy on the front foot here. I won't necessarily recommend it, but it works for him. And besides, he's really close right here, so there's really no point in, you know, or he can get away with being super heavy on the front foot. He can get away with being very heavy on that on that front leg, you know. But on on occasion or on some instances where you're not this close to your opponent, I won't necessarily recommend that okay so great smothering right here by pete using his opponent's body as a shield after he throws his combination and then sometimes switching the southpaw even you know he switches to a southpaw stance which is really amazing too all right here's the next one is going to be a bending reverse pivot again what he's going to do he's going to bend at the waist okay and then he's going to take that lead foot He's gonna turn it to the right side, and then he'll do a reverse pivot in order to turn his opponent, and in order for him not to stay in one location, okay? Very slick move by him. So here, you will see him take that reverse pivot, and then get away from the center again, avoiding any punches that comes, and then staying not necessarily in front of his opponent. He'll pivot right here, and all of a sudden, he's a different target now, right? He's leaning on that left shoulder of his opponent. And it's going to be much harder to, to, to land a shot on him from this position because he already took that tiny reverse pivot. And from there, he was able to create an angle for himself and put himself in the position where he cannot be caught, okay? Next one right here, he's going to bend at the waist once again. Now, this is the squared's mother. He's going to bend at the waist once again. By the way, this footage is all by Powcast Sports, you know, one of the best sports casters in the Philippines, so definitely subscribe to him. If you can understand Tagalog, okay? If you can understand Tagalog, then you're gonna find this channel to be really good. One of the OGs here in the Philippines, by the way. All right, so he's gonna bend at the waist once again here, boom, and then he's gonna take that reverse pivot. Instead of pivoting with, with the lead foot first, he's gonna pivot with that right foot. He's gonna take it there. I think, yeah, it's counterclockwise. And then he'll take his head away from the center, he'll take his body away from the center, he'll create an angle for himself for a possible shot or for a possible combination from that position. So let's see if he throws anything here. No, he decided not to do it, he just decided to pivot so that he can escape from the onslaught of his opponent. And so that he can get out of there safely, and then there he switches stances, or he switches into a southpaw stance. Speaking of switching into a southpaw stance, Next thing we're going to talk about now is the right hook switch. So what he's going to do here is because he puts so much weight on his right hook, or because he puts so much weight on his right hook, what's going to happen most of the time is that he's going to be off balance, okay? He's going to be really heavy on that front leg, so what does he do to cope up with that? And what does he do to get himself back on balance? He decides, or he switches into a southpaw stance, so that's what he usually does. So let's just see an example here. Right hook, boom, switch. Avoiding himself or preventing himself from being too heavy on that front leg and possibly getting countered while he is on the front leg Let's look at another one here He's gonna throw that right hook once again instead of 
following through it instead of being overly heavy on that front leg he's gonna again just switch to a softball stance and get back to his original position that he initially was in next one here so we're right hook once again right now he's on that front leg he's on that left leg he's leaning on that left leg so what does he do boom okay just like that he's in the same position but he's in a southpaw stance how do you know it's because he decides to actually face this way now okay he's in a southpaw stance a while ago he was in an orthodox stance in order to cope up with that what he decides to do is he decides to shift his weight or transfer his weight now to that right leg and now he's in a southpaw stance He's back on balance, right? So let's look at that one more, one more time. Boom, right hook, he's on that left leg right now. He's gonna turn his body. Boom, and now all of a sudden he's on that right leg and he's in a southpaw stance. Same position, but different stance because he's facing in a different way now than he was, or than when he was a while ago. All right, next one here. Again, bending at the waist, right hook here didn't really want to commit to it he didn't really want to follow through so i forgot to say that whenever he doesn't want to commit to a particular power punch this is what he does a lot okay he will just switch stance after he throws the punch so he can prevent himself from being off balance so this is another example here he just throws that right hook quick betting at the waist throws the right hook quick misses wildly okay so this is another situation where you can use it if you miss wildly on a shot then what he's gonna do there as you can see it all starts in the back leg so take a look at his back leg here after he throws that right hook boom his back leg or his back foot is already lifted off the ground getting ready to propel himself back or getting ready to propel his body weight back right here and then from there he can switch stances boom he can plant that back heel on the ground and then switch into a southpaw stance real quick last thing i want to talk about is the sudden or the subtle lead foot movements that pete has again this is a very slick fighter very rare here in the philippines so you know this is why i'm breaking him down he's relatively unknown yes he still has a lot to improve on but you can look back in this video for you know after a couple of years and you're gonna be like oh man ring world map was right this guy was legit you know he just needed some time so for this one T just take a look at his lead foot. This is going to be a little bit hard to see, if, especially if you're an untrained eye. If you have an untrained eye, this is going to be difficult to see. So I just want you to guys to pay attention to his lead foot right here. I'm going to start off with the right hand. Roll right there. Watch his lead foot. Bam, he takes it right there. Does the reverse pivot that I talked about a while ago. What does that do? That prevents him from being a straight target. That prevents him or that gets him away in front of the... Or that turns his opponent in a way and that prevents him from being straight in front of his opponent does that reverse pivot right there watch his lead foot here where it goes okay L left hook left hook right here watch his lead foot right here boom he's gonna take that put it in line with the right foot of his opponent now he's turned once again so he has already turned twice for this particular example he turned a while ago on that reverse pivot and then now after he throws that double left hook he takes that lead foot once again now he's in a squared up stance he turns his opponent once again his opponent is facing that way and pete is already facing this way so i'm just gonna draw an arrow right here and then there he moves his lead foot once again for what he moved that to turn into a southpaw stance and, and so he can place this right uppercut that he threw right here and then he places his right foot now inside the left foot of uh, his opponent. Why? To prevent him from getting away. Okay, so he traps that left foot of his opponent, that lead foot of his opponent. And then from there, he threw another right hook to the body, I think. And then he just resets, switches stance, you know, all good, right? All right, here's the last one. Left hook or left straight, right hook. He takes that lead, lead foot once again there okay turning his opponent his opponent is facing this way pete is already facing this way now he does that pivot from a southpaw stance his opponent is now facing that way and then pete will take this left foot once again and do another reverse pivot his opponent is facing that way pete is already facing this way but what does Pete do? He decides to cancel at the, at the last second. I don't know what it is. Maybe he was afraid that if he does a reverse pivot once again here, he's going to get caught with one of those left hooks from his opponent on his way out. That's why he decided not to go through with the reverse pivot anymore. 
and he just decides to stand on the ropes right there. So this is a guy that you really gotta watch out for, man. If you want to, or if you're a foreigner, if you're from the US, one of my US viewers, if you are not from the Philippines, go ahead and watch this guy. You know, there's a lot of fights of him online. And again, I give all the credit to a podcast for so this one. He owns all the footage, I think. All of his fights, all, or all of Apollinar's fights is in his channel, so definitely check it out. And that was it, man. Subscribe if you're new. And watch out for the fight of uh, Pete in Japan, okay, against a kickboxer. This is really going to be a good fight. The guy's pretty damn tall, so it's going to be a tough night for Pete, man. But I think Pete is going to pull it off. So that was it. I'll see you guys soon. Peace out.